Daytona 64, Allied Esports Odyssey, 15,000 euro qualifier here. Finally getting underway, and Team Bonk, we've been talking about them quite a bit already. Here's Bonkar himself playing the Sova to start us off. On right, defense. and this is like we mentioned a little bit in our in our <laughs> impromptu pre-stream. Uh, Bonk is definitely favorites going into this. Uh, just some players to watch out for right away is Yasin and Safe. Both of these players have been absolutely tearing up during the mandatory .gg Cup um, versus Opportunist, who a little bit on the newer end of the entries here, but. Hopefully, looking to make a name for themselves in uh, the qualifying matches here. All right, just trying to prettify this overlay a little bit so you can read these team names. Cover going out. Now. And now we're watching no Necro, way. the attacking Omen, switching on over to Sage, switching on over a million times, <laughs> catching all the <laughs> different taken. entry angles here, and uh, Cipher already with the offensive cage to try and get over to that orb freely. I do like that. Move. Yeah, trying to make his way forward here onto the A site and. Right now, ooh, open kill, opened up on by safe there, and still making their way in through connector. So defense already with the upper hand. You can hear the door closing nearby. Safe watching that uh, A entry angle, but no one is there. Instead, it's going to be over at the cubby where the spike is currently. Lots of jet and omen smokes blocking things up here vision-wise. Yeah, and that's going to be Z's with a couple of really good to start that one off and that's sort of that's sort of the the trap of ascent especially when you're prodding that far up mid you kind of need to pull the trigger and hit that go button because you get locked up by all those omen smokes like you mentioned and it really starts to slow down you get caught out in that entryway and you can let rounds fly so first round obviously going to the defense here that's going to afford them a little bit of extra cash they could choose to buy up some SMGs if they want to go that route and just have the superior fire force, or they can save again and everyone can have ARs in the third round, but looks like still ghosts, and here's a Spectre on Bonker, for example. Yeah, Zs and Bonker both grabbing up a uh, Spectre here, looking to try to put some rounds down, and Zs is going to be the one to start things off with another little triple there. Well, Logan's going to trade that one back. Not going to lose out on the gun, and for now, safe should just be able to stall their advance. So you actually saw that triple uh, slightly before I did. Hopefully, we'll, I'll maybe refresh it between rounds here, and we'll get back on exact timing. But oh, Cipher eating a, the blast pack to the face there. You seen <laughs> using all the utility to get that done. Sage is still carrying the spike, but is alone on the map now. Can't see this going well. Yeah, surrounded at Cubby, and that'll be defenders up two to zero. Yeah, that's going to be, like you mentioned, Bonk. Of course, favorites in this tournament and starting things off with a very dominant performance. Now, fortunately, this will mean a full buy round, as I think they had a full save. They have pretty much full saved. Decent amount of utility as well on the side. So it's easy to shrug off those first two rounds and just kind of say, all right, you know, we lost the pistol round. We can shake this off. We can come back. And now, opportunities. This is the first round to show us what you got, so. All right, Omen Smoke just keeping Omen blind on B defense. It looks like that is a split push basically all the way across the map. They haven't really decided to force one area looking for picks instead. Rodin finding the headshot on Yassine does open up a little bit of a gap there. But the Sage Wall will buy them some time at A. Yeah, and given the gun scenario, I was just one of those... Players, ah, we can get aggressive. We don't lose out too much. It really only costs them a $400 wall uh, and losing out on raise. So there is an opportunity here for the opportunists. And we'll see if their namesake holds true for taking advantage of it here. As Safe is looking for another jiggle peek, but Roden's going to be the one who puts him down there. A great way to start this off is it's three to five. Yeah, Rodin has been pretty impressive already, racking up these kills. Ziz now lurking around mid on defense, but they are undermanned here. Still five attackers, and it looks like B, uh, this three-man squad here, tiptoeing forward, and there are no defenders on B. So as soon as they realize that, as soon as they get the site clear, we'll see the uh, dominoes start to fall. But Brams does catch another defender. This is all but certain. You know, five versus two at this point. It would be pretty tough to come back, and Rodin grabs himself a third kill. 
Yeah, that's Roden picking up that kill there. And I kind of like this execute. It's a it's a risky commit onto the A site to send two members in, but at the position you're in, you can kind of afford that man advantage. And with Z's being forced to try and save, see what he has up in store for us. He spots out the cypher and we'll be able to get that frag. He doesn't know that one more is there, but he's going to play around his smokes oh, for now. He's surrounded. Of course, we can see that with the X-ray vision, but he's going to keep himself sheltered here. Can he grab one more kill? Yes. Maybe another before this is all said and done. Oh, oh he ran he out of ammo. He he's back, but didn't have the ammo. <laughs> That's rough. Good round. Yeah, though. coming right through the smoke there. He could see the stream of bullets coming out, but he couldn't quite identify where he was. And if he goes for the reload there, he gives away his position. So, unfortunately, caught out with just three phantom shots. Not going to be enough to knock down uh, anyone of note in that round. And still um, would love to see the buy menu once in a while, just so we can, you know, see everybody at one time. But Vandal, uh, I've, Dragon I've, Vandal I've messaged here. the observer to try and oh, uh, thank get you, Mr. To Phil. Do that. I appreciate it. <laughs> see, I know, Phil... I know you would have shown the buy menu. Okay, no question. <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> Look at this blue flaming Dragon Vandal though, and the red dragon, oh, and the other the dragon, skins. Team Dragon. All the different elements. I love it. So good. It looks like once again prodding towards this A bomb site. They got five here, and it looks Ooh. like they're gonna dash in. Aaron's gonna be the one to start that one off. But then it's starting frag there onto Bram's team captain down, and we'll hope that the disarray doesn't so discourse, but safe's gonna get a good frag to even that one up two to one so far as Roden strikes back. Exactly. Four defenders standing and Cypher using the ultimate as well to mean all that information. That was the attacking Cypher. Uh trying to spot all the defenders up there on the heaven area, but the spike is on the site. He is planting regardless with four defenders remaining. Uh, safe here with the AWP. Going to be very difficult to catch an angle there. So uh, might need the teammates to jump in first. Bonker shooting through the floor gets that frag. Yeah, finds his way onto Hoppy there. And you have a decent amount of time to play with, but everyone is funneled into one spot. Safe for Z's and the Rays coming around the corner here. Double peaks and it goes one for one so far. Hell is going to be the last place that he's standing, but... Bonker's not going to let him stand for very long, and Team Bonk cleaning up that round. Team Bonk up 3-1 now. Dragons all, all around if they want to pick them up and <laughs> uh, be styling on the opponents there. But, uh, yeah, 3-1, solid start. I do think Ascent is CT-sided or defense-sided, as CT does not exist in this game. But uh, <laughs> that's that's my personal thought. What, what do you, What's your take on offense versus defense here? Uh, for Ascent specifically, I feel mid is, mid was, I think, at, during the development of the meta of this map was kind of divisive, where a lot of teams were kind of looking at mid on T side as kind of a bait uh, if you don't have enough, long, you know, you don't have enough ops to kind of take down at that area. But you can even see there with that Silver Arrow coming in, there's so many good spots to get so much information on the attacking side of mid that you don't even necessarily need to control it on the CT side. You really just need to have enough utility to get your information out. And hopefully the side lanes will give you what you need as Brams is going to find what he needs, getting a frag onto safe there. Takes a bit of damage for it, but one for none at the start of the round. Yeah, a little bit of a duel, finally kicking things off. It looks like they again, again split across the map. Sometimes that's called a default split, where it's like 2-1-2. Two, two. Uh, mm -hmm. you got you know, two on each site and one in mid. But there's another kill here for the attackers, and they are they mounting life. this advantage. Aaron, the Cypher, has been doing pretty he well holding A, but he's surrounded now. And yeah, it's not going to take long as the attackers just march into A. Only one defender oh. left. Uh, with Sova Bonker, we see his POV now, but again, surrounded, spikes planted. Probably doesn't need to Ooh. save. Good kill there. He only has 100 credits, so I mean, you might as well take people with you if you can. Right, he has an opportunity to save the op, but it looks like he's feeling the opportunity. No, that's not the op you're looking for, as <laughs> he will grab it out there. He might get spotted on his way around. Oh, just barely. Yeah, yeah. So close. Yeah, slipping past the Sova there, ends up escaping his way to the B bomb site, and Roden might be the next one to come in contact with him, but it looks like Bonker's going on a bit of a journey here. Revealing area. 
as Bunker loops around. Obviously, he's just trying to save some cashola. Um, I don't know if he's been playing the op. I don't think he has, actually. I think it's been mostly the jet player, or the sage, actually, on defense is safe. Yeah, and that's another will kind of development that's come about more recently uh, when we're talking about sort of the metas that develop in early Valorant play is sort of ops on sages and playing very aggressive battle sages as they're kind of known. Safe especially being uh, one of the players, I believe he had a 225 ACS coming out of the mandatory.gg cup. So he's somebody that you can, you can give the op to and you can expect some results. So we'll see if he's able to deliver here. And just reference, as always, ACS is average combat score. You get points for uh, frags, obviously. You know, first blood is worth more than second blood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, Phoenix, who I play, tends to have a higher average combat score just because he has more lives than other people. But um, people have were complaining about it. You know, Sage, as a more support character, was having a harder time getting higher average combat scores. But maybe this Battle Sage meta will flip that on its head. The attackers right now still fully intact, still... Uh, splitting pretty evenly, but they do have three over on the B site right now with only Cypher really defending that area. Could be a good entry for them. Right, and the double omen ult pops in the backside of B here. This is a great spot to be in as the execute is coming through now. It's a one for one so far, but the rest of the team is rotating in from Bonk as Aaron and Bonk are gonna Ooh. grab up one apiece. Bram's looking for an opportunity. The right click's nice. gonna spot him out, misses the second one. Well, he got that single kill and was able to at least back out there. Bram's scoring a headshot with just, you know, the gun, not the ult this time. Raze, though, hopping into play with the rocket, does not get the kill he's looking for. And Jet is going to try to block that vision. Sage with the slow on the side means uh, the defense is still sort of reeling here. However, only one attacker left. Can Bram's lock it up? Right, Bomb still needs to go down, but it's a one versus one, and it looks like he's going to try and force the fight on him, but Brams nice. is going to come out on top. What a kill there. Four kills for Brams. He got ultimate kills. He got some headshots. He's swinging the knife like crazy here. Ties things up. Keeps his team neck and neck with the defenders. Excellent round for him. The rest of the team, obviously, you know, chipping in there, but Brams making it look pretty easy there with those last couple of kills. Right, and... That's that's the kind of rallying play that you want from your team captain. So if Brahms is able to hold up that momentum, it'll serve dividends as it looks like on the side of Bonk, they are going to be going into a sort of light buy, sheriffs and pistols with a little bit of light armor, saving up for that next round. So Yeah, they obviously are under firepower. <laughs> uh, the defense here sort of outmatched, but you know, that's just uh, patience, utility. You got to try and get those pistol kills just where you can and you see Yasin actually here being kind of sneaky hopping up on some terrain trying to pop some shots over but safe actually does get the pistol kill on Rodin that's a nice pickup for the defenders still a 44 situation and another sheriff kill goes the way of the defense right bonk exactly starting things right. off nicely here necro's gonna turn around for that one find it a good turnaround there on to Aaron and now it looks like B is the execute site necro's in a great spot to catch rotations but they are on to him at this point. As he saw that's going to be Yasin finding him out, trying to duel that, but it's not have the eco to do exactly that. They are going to pop the res right away, which is a little bit surprising on an eco round, but they feel like they can make this happen. I agree. Very surprising. This is a, a round that I would consider more of a throwaway, obviously, as you're on pistols and they're not. You're, you got a couple of kills already, but to commit the res, they must be feeling good about it. They did grab guns off people they killed, but Hoppy now punishing them for that decision. Three kills straight there from an easy angle, uh, just looking at market there. So Hoppy looking strong, and the attackers now have the lead for the first time. Right, and Hoppy definitely making them regret their ult choice. And to touch on what you were talking about with kind of that ult be or the sage ult being popped in an interesting spot, it's kind of a little bit, we're watching kind of Bonk give away a lot of utility in those ult slots. We did see in the round prior, the Hunter's Fury being popped just to kind of probe out mid, but we're not seeing a whole lot of value coming out of it. And if that's, you know, if you're throwing away ults like that, 
Definitely gives opportunists their chance to try and make something happen if they're able to get better value out of it. I'm so There's scared right now. There's whole popping out here. Oh my god, the five-man stack on A is never, you know, <laughs> what I would consider a, 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 a strong play, but the fact is the Sova ultimate shook the defenders so much, and the defenders are nowhere near. Like, Yasin is wrapping all the way around from spawn at this point. And the attackers seem to have pretty firm ground. Spikes planted. They had two in hell already and covering every angle. Right, and he did blast pack in, so I do think they know that he's there, but Hoppy's turned around here. Will he get spotted out? He will. Oh. Yassine's gonna open up on that one. A second one soon to follow thereafter. Yasin popping off there, actually trying to save the game or save the round. We do have Sage still hanging out in Hell area. Bram's getting taken down by the op, and this just collapsed like a house of cards. Uh, 2v2 still Cypher, the lone attacker left in Hell. The defuse is out. Can he stop it? Looks like Sage is trying to duel. Does get that op shot. Wow, I wish we had seen that POV safe with a monster clutch there. Right, definitely pu pulling his weight and then some in that kind of a round and almost had the opportunity to stick it, but he did get the half and that's kind of... That always adds that extra dynamic of you get the half and you have that moment of, okay, I can pop off now and yeah. in the case of safe, ends up paying dividends. Absolutely a skill cap maneuver there. Uh, as you play more Valorant, you learn you know those situations where you can just half defuse. Uh, safe, obviously very confident there. Got the close range op shot. That's really, you know, if I'm in that position, I'm, I'm scared to half defuse because close range op shot can just go wild way. so easily. But safe obviously has the hours <laughs> put in with that gun. <laughs> Feels very confident. And now we've got a new round here. Again, it's going to be a default sort of split 2-1-2. Two, two. Definitely. And when you have the resume, you can afford to make plays like that. But... He's a solo member on to B right now. We'll see if his resume is going to hold up. He will put a wall up just to delay the advance onto B side here while the A execute from Rodin still trying to find his way forward, destroying a lot of utility on the way. So decent amount of impact to the wallet and the options that Cypher has on that A side. All right, Hoppy has been revealed, but no casualties just yet. Time obviously ticking it down, still no kills. Defense actually very, very close to the attackers, but Jet has the knives out. Aaron is in a Ooh. scary, scary spot. Jet not even needed. Right, and speaking of knives, Brams is going to bring his own knives out. Aziz is going to find one, find two, but Brams is going to be pulling back over to trade that frag over. Still knives in the air, but Safe is going to put them down. Another op kill over to him. He's walled off for now and doesn't have to be too worried about anyone coming over, but that's going to be a find Ooh. on a Necro there. Roden with a great position to trade that back over, like but the same instant. should be going down here. That, that op shot and Sage going down were like the exact same moment. That's unlucky for the attackers here, but just raise, not going well. Yeah, just gets a cleanup. Actually does get the collab <laughs> through the wall. There. Yeah, and definitely a bit unlucky for the side of Bonk there, but possibly well communicated by opportunists from that scenario. You did see Omen kind of lurking around in the connector area because he knew that that uh, Safe only had one way out going, or had two technically, but was going up towards that window. He would be able to see him over the Sage wall. I was a little bit surprised to see Rodin that far up on the, uh, up on the Heaven Rafter there, but didn't seem to be working out for them as now stacking up over towards the b-bomb site looking to play heavy on this side that's a, a couple of consecutive rounds now for the defenders that's a team bonk here and you can see kind of rays actually just lighting them up there they stacked heavy b this time so something i always like to do is watch the a site folks and see when they start to rotate when can they actually commit to dealing with the five push uh, and you see Omen, Omen actually starting to make tracks now as they do come, in, come into the B site hallway. Right, you are, and it looks like they are going to make the execute out. That's going to be Jet dashing onto site, and a lot of lurking potential coming nice. out here from the side of Opportunist, but oh. Bonker and Z's cleaning that one up nicely. Excellent combined fire there. Z's also finding another and actually switches to the classic. The spike is being planted, <laughs> but one bullet is all it takes to shut that down from safe. And six to four is your scoreline now. That's three rounds in a row successfully defended. We are getting closer and closer to the half here. Uh, it was looking kind of nice for opportunists there once they finally grabbed the lead. They looked like they had some momentum, but now a couple of close rounds later, 
and Bonk once again with the upper hand. They've got the cash, they got the guns, they got the ladies, and opportunists looking for anything they can get. Right, and to kind of touch on what, or to like circle back to what you're mentioning earlier, the all out aggression onto a single site from opportunists over aggression almost seems to be their undoing here as now we're starting to see returning to like a 3-2 not exactly playing very hard for the mid lane as it looks like control is held by bonk for now but i definitely think that you had the right idea for them in you can't be overly aggressive onto one site because when you're playing too far up you just give that much more room you have to cover and bonk has just kind of picked apart them in the past couple rounds and I have noticed also just Bonk really don't like to push out past mid until basically a, a spike is planted. Like they, they mm -hmm. do a really good job with their patience generally. And, you know, again, we're in a situation where opportunists, 40 seconds are already burned off, 50 seconds now before anyone's even exchanging fire. They're just all tossing utility, trying to gain information. Uh, so this, I'm not sure if they should be more aggressive just because, you know, these time uh, to plant end up with like 15 seconds or less each round when they do actually get onto a site. So uh, they might be making it a little more difficult on themselves. Of course, you can't just force your way through a brick wall either. So we'll have to see if they can finagle something like, oh, that rodent kill on the site, for example. I know exactly where going. Yeah, that's going to start things off, but it will be the B execute as Silva's going to be making his way on. They're going to find Bonker out. And that's going to be them finding the bomb plant on B. And it was actually, the opening frag was huge for this round. You got Bonker to give up his position on yeah. B site and rotate over. Paid dividends in the way of, okay, everyone's rotating off of B. Everyone's going to A. When you have three men rushing out and you're just caught in transition, not going to be able to answer that one very heavily. Yeah, and you see where Cypher is now? Like, this is the kind of thing, I mean, they're undermanned, obviously. It's two versus four here. I don't expect them to even try to take this site, right, at this point. They've got Cypher way on the other end of the world. Yeah, Ray is unable to do anything there. So this is pretty much a foregone conclusion. Rodin with the opening kill there and a third frag. Rodin really impressing here as an offensive Cypher, which is tough to do. Definitely. And I don't, we don't know a ton about the econ position here, but is Aaron going to find Ooh. him out here? Oh, barely going to. Uh -huh. <laughs> Gets out on that duel, and Logan's going to be the one taking that one home. So for last round, it looks like should have an okay buy over on the side of Bonk, but finishing the half so. six and six is a pretty good position to be in for opportunists if you are entering as the underdog into this game. Yeah, um, not expected to win the match at all, regardless of map. And the fact is, I think Ascent is defensive sided, so getting in with five attacker Shadow rounds Strider. is actually kind of nice. Uh, obviously, the more the merrier for them, but Rodin here, again, we've been watching this offensive Cypher get first blood a couple of times. Um, he's going to have to be responsible here for helping out because the bulk of his team already went on to Site B. There is a Sova lurking on Site B. That there is, and he's going to get found out here. Should just be going down. This Oof. is looking like opportunist round to take. We're coming out of the mid-entrance now. Jacin is sneaking his way through here. Going to get tagged up by his teammate, but no team damage, so not too worried. But he will be going down to Brams. That damage definitely sticks. And Z's is going to have quite the job in front of him, but something that he can't quite execute on. Hoppy going to be picking up the last frag and finishing the half six and six. All right, six and six, very, very even game. And I do want to remind everyone, this is a best of one round. All of the rounds today are best of one until the very last round. So we're in the round of 64 now. Obviously have quite a lot of Valorant ahead of us, but didn't expect it really to be a, a, such a tight one here in the round of 64, especially with these open signups. You never really know what caliber of team you're going to get, but I have to obviously give it to Opportunists, keeping it close here. Definitely giving themselves the chance at a victory and an upset. But Bonk, now that they're on the offense, we'll see how they do things differently. If you look at the team compositions, the only real difference here is the Rays swapped out for a Jet. Um, and, you know, both of them obviously very lethal characters. Rays specifically can hold hallways very easily with tank grenades and things like that. Jet has the mobility to My take over a site solo. So. We'll see which might actually have the upper hand. The attacker is actually floating through mid. I do actually kind of like that on pistol rounds. I think uh, you don't really need 
to worry about mid as much, obviously, when there's no op threat or phantoms out there. So I'm uh, curious to see where they go from here. It looks like they want to try to clear Cubby, but no one's even there from the defense. Right, and they're going to shut the door on their faces as they're making their way in. They have a lot of time to still be playing with, so they don't even have to all in on the A site. They have a couple options. We'll see where they go, but you do see the Cypher looming around in the back, finds one there onto Brams, who is pushing just a little bit too aggressively. That's the aggression that we weren't seeing from Bonk in the rounds prior. You will know that there is a Sova here backing out, but loses the duel. Hoppy's gonna be trading that one one for one as Yasin's gonna find one, gonna find two after the teleport is completed. Necro not exactly where he wanted to be to start that one off. <laughs> Unfortunate for... Uh, that omen just obviously getting domed immediately, but you can see the spike is going down now. Still four attackers to two defenders, so obviously big advantage there, especially in the pistol round where it's you know no no real advantage for the defenders. And Sage gonna be creeping forward in the heaven area, but Raze should be able to deal with that. No, Raze actually was down in hell. Never mind. It's just uh, tough to tell from the mini map sometimes. But another headshot. Logan trying to keep things close. Can't quite wrap it up though, and that is gonna be. Now the first attacker win here for Team Bonk. That's going to give them a little bit extra cash in the pockets. Might see some SMGs. Actually, a Phantom getting loaded up here for Ziz. Right, and they are putting a, putting a little bit of the strain on their wallets to go down this much. But I almost don't mind this in this scenario. It, you know, there's always that risk, right? Of do you how much are you willing to spend on your second round? But they did get the first round into, into follow-up round win for the, uh, for Bonk, so I don't mind this, especially on aggression, where if you can just out-firepower the, the defending team, usually will run all right for you, and SMGs are a great way to try and run them down. As the Sova drone goes forward, you've seen trying to you know, shoot anyone who shoots at the drone. Obviously, it's kind of a one-two combo. Same with the boom bot, where you can try to flush someone out and, you know, follow up with a headshot. But at this point, they're not going to gain anything valuable just yet. Just burning that utility, gaining information. You can hear the door shutting now on A. A is heavily stacked. If the attackers <laughs> can recognize this, they can just go to B. Like, we'll see in mid soon. Rays actually will probably discover that A is locked down and they can start moving. That it definitely is, and you can see Sage hanging out towards the B bomb site. I think he just got spotted out by the camera, and that's going to be the call for the A team to be rotating. They have a four-man push going all the way through. This could set up for an interesting post plant, as we'll see if Bonk are even going to be able to get out onto site. The problem is <laughs> getting out onto site. You don't know how many members are coming around the corner, but... Two trains on either end of the map is how things are going to start off here. This could be very explosive any moment now. Now you see the utility just flying out from every direction. The attacker is just sweeping the area, but there's nothing to sweep. Brams and Logan going down very quickly there. Ziz watching their flank, gets the couple of kills. The last couple of defenders now remaining in market. I see a shorty equipped here. Hoppy, that's <laughs> not that's not the play, bud. And that is going to be a not, flawless not round. Not optimal in the least. <laughs> <laughs> For that kind of a push out. And that was that was a scenario where actually the SMGs sort of pay pay for themselves as in the chaos that kind of erupted with members flying in. You have a five-man push B main into four people coming from the other side of mid. Ends up working out in Bonk's favor, just having that extra firepower and as Chaos Theory would apply, you have a raise, you have all of the guns. It's going to end up bringing you on top for that side. And you could see, actually, in the kill counts there, there, there's a reason they let Ziz get the Phantom early. He's up, you know, 19 frags. Next most was 12 on the team. Brams, with the early op shot, though, is going to stop them in their tracks a little bit here. Oh, oh but Yasin fires right back. That's a long-range SMG kill. That it was, and Brams kind of got caught looking in the wrong direction. I'm not entirely sure what he was looking at, but Roden's going to be looking in the right one. Only going to go one for one there, though. Bonkers swinging out onto him, and they should be opened up onto the site, but they're waiting for the plant as they know the push is coming. They have decent position for the crossfire, trying to just poke and prod their way in, and that will be Logan and Necro opening that one up. Not going to get the bomb down in the end as... Just honestly, a good synchronized push from the side of Opportunist going to be pulling that one ahead.
Taking a look at the econ here, Aaron does have cash for a gun. We'll see what he ends up with. But actually, full full loadouts on both sides here. Unsure about utility, of course, but uh, at least everyone is strapped with an AR or better. And you can see Bonkers POV here just loading up that Sova utility as they will be actually stacking the A side slightly heavy. Perhaps no, still look at two one two. I guess Omen is gonna just deal a jet mid with that smoke, and then decide where he wants to go from there. Right, and that's gonna be dark coverage thrown out of there onto the connector side. We'll see what Bonk is able to make of just kind of prodding for information on this A site. No players in to mid just yet, and while we do have the Omen kind of just playing around that area, Safe is gonna be the first one to open things up with a shot onto Brams there, op to op, and. Mm -hmm. You can see Defensive Omen actually looping around now as that occurs because it looks like Cypher is just unfamiliar with how many players are in that hallway. Uh, he's going to just trap up the exit right now, but uh, obviously the attackers with a 5v4 advantage, they're going to loop around through spawn and rejoin everyone together here. So do expect some fireworks here. Actually, Bonker finding Orange there, or Logan Jus d'Orange. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that means the attackers obviously have a big advantage, 5v3 coming in here, but the defenders are aware that this push is coming. So maybe some ordnance flying out, out. Sova's shock darts, but Sova's way over at A still. Right, and with 30 seconds on the clock, that may come to be relevant if Bonk is deciding to make oh. a re-in. A good little beat up oh. bounce there. Yassine flying in with the showstopper there. Gets traded out by Rodin, but that's an easy frag on. Now, Hoppy has the opportunity to slow this round down, get smoked off, so he isn't going to be able to stop them. They're going to close oh. the door on his face, and they should be able to get bombed down in time. If Hoppy but... had x-ray vision as those three people walked through the Cypher screen, like, uh, that would have been glorious for him to just lay into them, but he is actually cleaning up anyway. Couple of kills there, puts him up to three, and we're in a 1v1 situation. Rodin has been playing really well, but so has Ziz and he is going to successfully get that attacking round cleaned up. Nine to seven now for Team Bonk. Starting to separate a little bit here. We were six, six, seven, seven, now nine, seven. Only a few rounds remaining in the game here, and Team Bonk have been executing pretty cleanly on this B site, uh, but they did just get A as well, so they're able to shift it around as needed, waiting for those opening picks. Safe with the op has been very clean. Uh, Ziz has been watching mid each time. However, it doesn't look like the defense has a dedicated op mid, uh, which some teams do opt for. Right, they've kind of been having their jet play aggressively with the op on the B site. And I do think it's kind of a note for opportunists is Defense side, they are very aggressive overall, just with the past rounds we've seen of how far they're willing to push up, and it hasn't always been working for them. Now, there is something to said or something to be said about being unexpected in that kind of play. Is Hunter's Fury's gonna come out, he's trying to track him down, gonna get one shot on as Aaron oh, will, no will be feeling. knocked down in the end. <laughs> That's the worst feeling to me. Dying to a Sova Ultimate might be the worst feeling to me because you know it's coming. You like you should have been yeah. able to get out, right? But man, it is tough sometimes when you get pinched. And Hoppy, especially with that shock dart on you, you're just <laughs> you're just praying that you're sidestepping and that the ping doesn't come in time with his shot. But Hoppy's they just will be finding Sova. that opening frag and. For now, it doesn't look like opportunists are getting too aggressive, which I am kind of happy to see. And we'll hopefully see that be the difference in the, this kind of a round as they're pivoting back over towards the A site now. I'm fairly certain Omen knows that Raze is nearby, but now he is going to be unaware of these other three looping rounds. So as the utility flies out, that's a long range Omen throw. He's actually going to port over to B, but does not have the spike. Jet. Wait, oh, they canceled. They canceled the Omen te teleport. Okay, Hoppy still here dealing with attackers entering through A site front door only seven seconds left this is not gonna happen defense really had a, a tight grip on this round yeah no time left but you seen finds a little time to get a, a little exit kill there we might see one more if he's able to find Ooh. necker on the smoke he does <laughs> was that totally blind just bullet uh, trail no i I, th I would imagine that he poked his gun barrel through could be, could be, we yeah. we flicked away for a moment before we saw it but Unfortunately, just because you won the round does not necessarily mean the round is 100% over. And 
I think opportunists kind of were saying to themselves, okay, good, we got, we had an opportunity to be aggressive. No pun intended, of course, but they poke their heads just a little bit too far. And every time that they've been aggressive so far, Bonk has been pretty consistent about punishing. All right, looking at Rodin's POV here now, defensive Cypher, just all the gadget spots. Cypher's a character that I don't play much, but I do like learning from uh, these positions here. I'm more of a duelist myself, but uh, as Bonker moves forward now with the squad, you can see there's a couple of pistols in hand. So this is a tough round potentially here for the attackers. Uh, Yassine leading the charge here with the Phantom, hopefully gets an entry frag and they can trade up on guns. But uh, Sage carrying the bomb, very, very common. Hoppy does get dropped, so that is going to be an upgrade for somebody. And the attackers in an interesting spot. You normally don't see them all crowded up mid like this. <laughs> yeah, pushing all the way up into you CT. A safe's going to pop the ultimate onto Yassine. It's such a hard area to challenge because you have to look both towards the back of B and A at the same time. But now they're in an interesting position as... They have one Cypher lurking around mid, but it looks like A will be the execute. As the camera not going to spot anyone out just yet. So you see he's gonna find one on the road and into hell, Necro's going to lurk. The Omen trying to hide in the shadows, and it's when he alone. reveals himself, will he find anything? No, Yassine going to find him out, shining light on the Omen's dark days down in hell. Unfortunately, Omen was all by himself, and you know you can see the other two players on his team bouncing around. The attackers spawn at this point, but uh, at this point, obviously, another foregone conclusion. Looks like Team Bonk is going to step it up now 10 to 8 as the defenders just really don't have time. They're not going to try to overextend here. But again, well executed by the attackers. They had three pistols in hand to start the round. They were able to get that entry frag and trade up and just swarm A before the defenders could get into a solid enough position. Logan here, nice tap, but does fall. And that's a fourth kill for Yassine, who has been really shining here on the offense that he has and you can see him now running around he wants to find his ace i'm wondering if brams is going to give it to him he'll be giving it to safe pushing out from the market area there taking him down with an op shot and still a fine position like you mentioned the round was a foregone conclusion no need to stress it out all you've seen of course wants to pad his kda he's trying to catch this 19 that he 22 is. Saying, 19 and 11. <laughs> You can't be the only one popping off here. I'm an entry. For, I'm playing a frag carry for a reason. Correct. So we see a, a three-two split, uh, heavy on the A side. However, keeping the spike back a bit. Obviously, when someone dies with the spike, that's going to reveal its location. So you'll see them just leave it uh, at the beginning of rounds before they get some information. And there you see actually defense needing to back off at B after getting hit by the Sova reveal. Now Sova ult flying out once again. Yasin stops that with the showstopper excellent right putting start. putting a quick end to that one and i do like that safe used the wall over towards the b site to get a good angle to peek into the a window through connector netting them that opening frag is huge because at 10 to 8 this is when you start to sweat if you're on the eight side of things and you know, you start to be worrying about pulling all of the last few rounds out and with two members down you're hoping that Opportunist's nerves are going to hold steel. It's for right now. Look at the like ciphers. <laughs> I know they're <laughs> playing opposite ends of the wall. Oh, they're oh both, they're going to beat each other in the end. The smoke goes up, but R is going to be the one to <laughs> open that one up. <laughs> Very nice. That was fun to watch. A little Cypher duel there. And uh, Logan here with the op trying to hold what he can, but 5v2. That's an impossible scenario with how Bonk has been playing here. 5 to 1 now. Uh, the Lone Sage is going to be swarmed here. Omen and Raze both closing in on his position. Logan, un unsure which direction to look. Doesn't matter. He's seen pops his head off his shoulders and drops a 20 bomb now for himself. That's 11 to 8. Attackers favored here. They've got the cash. They've got the guns. Once again, they've got the three-round advantage. So uh, as good as opportunists look, making it 6-6 six, six at halftime, things are starting to fall apart a little bit on defense. And I do wonder if it is op difference, as safe was just very, very skilled looking with it on defense. And now uh, it looks like the opportunists don't really have a person to match uh, and keep that mid control. That seems to be... if um, you know, if I'm analyzing this correctly, I think their, their mid is a bit soft compared to Team Bunk's performance. 
Yeah, I definitely think you have you have the right idea there as the aggressive off plays from a defensive position are just that much harder to execute on. But speaking of execute, you've seen sprinting out and says, don't mind if I have a tracker dart on me. They know they're on pistols now, but that's not going to be enough to stop Hoppy. He's going to open one up. Two tr kills traded back immediately from the sign of Bonk. So two for one so far. Rodin still hunting around here. Pops the ultimate. Kind of get an idea of if they're backing out or not. Rodin it does that because you can see Jet and Sage were trying to start a collapse there, but now I guess with the information they've you know rerouted a little bit, but they know exactly where everyone on the attacking side is. Jet can actually watch from Cubby very easily there. Omen backing off though on the attack side is kind of interesting. I'm curious if he's going to try a different direction, but time is totally against the attackers now. Brams, excellent pick there, uh, evening things up. That it is, and the situation, like you mentioned, a little bit. You unfortunate for Bonk here, guy. but the nice thing is they can re-execute onto the B site. There's not a whole lot of utility left. You will but as the ultimate is. pop, that's going to even the numbers back up. And now, exactly as you mentioned, the situation, the time is starting to run down. So 4v4 situation, both res is committed. Bodies are dropping left and right. You can see both sages actually taken down in the same instant. And Rodin capitalizes on the Cypher duel once again, but eight seconds left. Can he plant it? Is he going to even try, or is he going for the duel? It's not going to happen. Rodin with a triple kill and the Thrifty. Very nice there, keeping them in the game. They were down three rounds, so that was a big one for them. Definitely. And speaking of rounds and or er, nerves and pressure of the rounds here, that definitely could have been a round that if you are on the side of Bonk, you could have just said, okay, Things got a little bit too dicey. They they dis they uh they threw out enough ultimates. You could have just yeah. taken the back off there and just saved your econ into the oh, next round. You have full weapons. You can just take the loss there, and you know you're looking forward to a, a sage ulting someone that only has a sheriff. But then in the final few seconds, they try to force an execute. And it doesn't end up netting them value, so that's going to mean a full buy here on both sides, it's opportunists right. and. Bonk here with guns to spare. We'll see who executes better. And 11 to 9, it's all going to come down to that kind of execution. Looks like they're trying a bit of a squeeze play here on A. You can see Omen uh, starting to clear that cubby area. Raze and Sova have already used a lot of their utility. Uh, Sage keeping an eye on Market and CT while... Basically, they're just inching forward here. Uh, now that's a, a defensive omen play there to try and stall further. And again, the attackers, you know, the onus is on them to start to push eventually, especially with these doors closing and things like that. But safe pops off here, gets that opening frag for the attackers. And now B, they have to know B is soft because they've seen so much utility come out of A already. That they have. And that was a cypher almost all the way back in spawn. Safe kind of soloed up the mid lane and... Was able to take that one out. Looks like he's spotting the tripwire here, and they don't want to break it just yet. They want to hold on to their mystery as long as they can. But popping that tripwire, they're making oh. their way. And once again, playing for this back site. But Brams in B main is going to be the first one to open that frag there. Oh, misses out on that one. Dashes, but <laughs> unfortunately for him, there's a party coming in back site there. Shroud Four going out there. Up. Decent amount of damage dealing out, but Necro going to trade one, gets caught out. Time the up. defenders actually win. He yeah. was able to stop the bomb plant long enough. And when Yasin canceled his plant, he was not able to get the bomb down. 11 to 10 now. Defenders holding strong. The attackers took 10 years. And finally, like actually when Bonker went down, that was a huge turning point because he was slowly creeping forward with the spike. He got opt in the hallway by the jet and that just everything started collapsing from there because... A, they didn't have time to get to the site on time. B, they lost one of their you know top fraggers. And uh, C, once the jet got surrounded, they obviously still had a defender on B. So uh, eight seconds left once you've reached the site is not enough, guys. You gotta press the gas occasionally here. Safe, popping the enemy sage. Excellent start here for the attackers again, but we did just see that same thing last round. So they gotta still work with what they're getting here. Right, you are. And this is sort of an interesting point with what you're talking about of if Bonk is not going to be aggressive enough in time for Opportunist is overly aggressive. So a little bit of two sides of the same coin. And as it stands right now, Bonk are holding on to the lead, but 
it's slowly starting to hurt more and more as this is most likely their last buy round if they aren't able to pull this one out. They can make the Econ hurt for opportunists as much as they want, but the rounds are going to start adding up, and especially with those win bonuses stacking, start to worry about how things are going to be going later on into these into these rounds. So, ooh, Hoppy getting it started, but does fall over as well. I was going to say it's kind of interesting how they're crowding Cubby and not the A entrance, as we have been seeing, but... Obviously, if they're not getting it done, it's important to switch it up and, you know, keep them on their toes. But the defenders now, Necro with an op, Rams with an op. They're just firing through the floor here, trying to find a kill. But Safe just backs off and gets that headshot. Close range op. Again, I'm always impressed uh, when they can just do the quick scope there. And now the situation is kind of falling apart for the defenders. They're going to back off. They're going to save their ops. Looks like Team Bonk will finally snap that streak of... Uh, there. losses, round losses. Definitely. And with the rounds kind of in the situations that they are of how many people have fallen throughout the past couple rounds, I think saving here, this is one of those points that will hold on as Bram's thinking about a shot onto the connector, exit there, but not going to find it. Shouldn't have enough time to just hang out in T-spawn here. But what I was just going to get at is... This 11 to 10, these are those rounds that can really make or break teams as far as eco because you do not want to find yourself on an economic back foot that you're not able to full buy on match point. Just requesting into that, both teams should have a full buy on the table and two ops on the side. Would need to hit tab to be able to see that, but I do believe they... They, they held on to two ops yeah, in the Cypher end. Yeah, Cypher and Brams uh, both yeah. hung on to theirs. And now it's uh, all the marbles actually here. Potentially, if the attackers can get that opening shot again, safe has been really good for Team Bonk on opening up holes. But Brams watching with the op. We knew the, the defending Cypher as well. Yasin hopping over the wall there. Does burn a little bit of utility. They know Cypher's there. He's been playing it all game long. And I'm curious where this first blood is going to take place. It is uh, a 3 1 1, actually, kind of a 3 2 split as nobody's really approaching B. Right, but the Hunter's Fury, again, a probing for information with that one. You've seen the paint shell gonna find Rodin there as it looks like it will be the A execute. Fortunately, for opportunists, they've rotated most of their team over to this A site, so it's gonna be an all out brawl on this one. Unless they're able to find their way up to mid. You can see Brams holding on to that mid with the op. Will he have an opportunity to spot anyone rotating over? Yee. Still waiting on the execution. 50 seconds on the clock. We'll hope that Bonk isn't going to be caught out with a little bit too little time. The Sage is trapped between the jet and the Sage. It doesn't even realize it. That he is. A safe is going to find the first frag. It's <laughs> I gonna still be got it. Ooh. The Jiggle Beak, but Hoppy... Cleaning that one up in the end. Got to trade that back. One for two overall still. So opportunity still in the favor of Bonk. They're going to look for this A to execute. 20 seconds on the clock. I can't believe Safe got that kill. But as the bullets start to fly here, Bonk finds the kill. Ziz as well. Suddenly only one defender left. It's Jet approaching from heaven. Rafters still got three attackers left. This is a extremely tough situation, especially with the op. Does not have ult available. Does have a little bit of, you know, cloud smoke and some uh, jumps, but not going to be much use if surrounded. And, man, obviously they're not going to give him any op angles. He's revealed his location now. Yeah, and that's, that's sort of a situation where if you're Brams, you have to take a pre-fire like that. You have to hope for something. But in the end, Bonk are going to clean it up. If you're opportunist, I would hope that you're still holding your head high after a performance like that with kind of pushing them to only a three round difference. I definitely felt like opportunists look like a solid team. And although they will be eliminated, I'd hope to see them coming back because that was quite quite a quite a good showing from them. I agree. And obviously you can see the uh, stats printout here. Average combat score Ziz and Yasin trying to match each other basically on frags the entire game. You seem to get more assists, so you know, credit to there. But uh, Rodin <laughs> obviously topping it for the opportunists, not enough uh, by himself though. And uh, you know, supporting characters, smokes, cipher traps, things like that. Obviously, seven kills, nine kills. It's just a factor of where you're playing most of the time. So uh, 
even low kill counts, obviously still very important. Eight assists on Aaron, <laughs> more assists than kills. That always feels kind of tough uh, as a player. That, yeah, that it does. But I definitely, if you are RM, you've been playing with this team for a little while. You've kind of come in as a dedicated, uh, a dedicated cipher. So in that scenario, I don't, you don't feel too bad playing anchor in this kind of a game with that much information. You're hoping that the info you bring to the table is what's going to pay for your team's win rather than your frag. And if you have combat scores like Z's, Yassine, and Save all with 200+, plus, it doesn't feel too <laughs> bad that you can let other people have the spotlight for